it's me stormy and here's your horoscope for january 2018 so virgo before we jump in i hope that you will come and bring your beautiful mercury energy and join me for three dollar thursdays that'll be going on all of 2018 the third thursday of every single month i will be doing a live but private teaching event where i'll be teaching about any number of astrological concepts so you just grab your chart whichever one you're working with bring it let's study let's walk through these things and walk through these um concepts aspects different forms that we see in the chart different structures all of these good kinds of things it's a wonderful time to just come and learn plus there's a brilliant question and answer sector so if you are wanting to be in a more intimate setting where you can ask me questions about your chart and have a much better chance of getting those questions answered than when we're doing the big bulky live chats, then I would love to see you in $3 Thursdays. Now coming up January 18th is our first one and we're going to be talking about business timing in astrology. I'll be pointing out certain aspects that are great if you want to start a business, leave a business, change something, buy something, sell something, all of these different aspects we'll go over and then we'll answer some questions about how they're hitting your personal chart. So I hope to see you there. Click in the description box down below. You can get signed up for one of the um, $3 Thursday sessions or just sign up for the whole year for $36 and come chit chat all year long. All right, Virgo. So really, this is kind of a cool month because as we're coming right here into the beginning of the year, it's a month of moons. We've got three moons this month and the very first one for you right here on the 1st of January is kicking off in your 11th house. Now this full moon in Cancer says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted because that's what the full moon does. We shift, right? Now being in Cancer and being in this 11th house, this is very much so nurturing, nurturing friendships here, right? Maybe there's been a big change or a big shift to some friendships that you've had in your life. It's certainly a great time at the beginning of the year to ask yourself, who am I running with? Who is really Team Virgo? Who do I need to let go of? So this is a wonderful chance to maybe do a little friendship house cleaning as well. The 11th house points to all things social. So social things, social gatherings, organizations, gyms, any place where you're finding social gatherings of people or very humanitarian causes and things like that, we're gonna see here in the 11th house. The other thing I'm thinking about, because this full moon sits and creates this big, beautiful, or sits amidst, I guess I should say, a really big, beautiful, grand trine of Neptune being over here in your partnership sector and then Jupiter being over here in your communication sector, what I'm thinking is, Maybe there's some long range goals you're looking to redo. You're looking to set a plan. Like the course of your world, I think over the last six months, Virgo has certainly taken a shift. I think you're pointed in a new direction and I think you have to lay that course out and say, okay, what does this look like long range? Where am I trying to go long range? What do I want from this long range? And who do I want to come with me? Now, the thing about the 11th house too, is that this is not just long range goals. This is your hopes and your dreams, your desires. Like, what do you really want? I mean, in the core of your belly or in the heat of your heart, what do you want, Virgo? Because that's where we need you to express. And you have this brilliant water trine that connects you to the desire, to the emotionalism, to the foundation, to the security of what you want. And if you will communicate it out, I think that there is a world waiting to be heard, a world waiting for you so that you can be heard, okay? Now, as we get to the second of the month, we see Uranus, who is our planet of, you know, he's breaking down structures. He's very electric. He's innovative. He's spontaneous. He's unexpected at best, right? He has been retrograde and he's going to come out of retrograde and be facing direct. Now, when he does this, what you do is you pop forward into new motion and new action, right? Because when Uranus was retrograde, things from the past old feelings, old desires, old illnesses, maybe even popped up for you, unexpected things, unexpected things in your own character, maybe even popped up where you're like, gosh, I can't believe I acted like that, right? Things like that could be popping up, Virgo, but as we come forward, what happens is you have a fresh, innovative start on how to go forward. You're breaking down your own barriers and you're like, okay, it's time to move. It's time to do this. Let's move some things forward. So I think this will be really interesting to see how this happens for you, especially around things that you're wanting to study or things that you're wishing to communicate and so on and so forth. So keep me posted on what that looks like for you as we move forward from the second. When we get to the 12th of the month, you have an absolutely loaded 
fifth house right now, which has been pointing to, and we talked about it last month, Virgo, you got to have some fun. You got to relax. You got to have some fun. Bring some joy into your life. Make moves that bring joy into your life. So with this loaded fifth house, Saturn being here, we know Saturn's not playing around, so you're going to get serious. You're going to take on some new responsibility. Pluto, Venus, the sun, and then we have on the 12th, Mercury making his way in. How beautiful is this? So now we start communicating. And one of the things that I think having Saturn and Mercury in the same space is, first of all, increased responsibility. So increased responsibility. You have to be responsible for creating the joy that you want in your life. You have to be responsible for expressing, um, being creative. And that doesn't just mean art and music. You know, Virgos, you can be creative healers with your hands. You can be creative with numbers or with patterns or with things like this. You're usually pretty beautiful around things with health. And you know what? Not everybody makes a great salad. You know what I'm saying? So whatever it is, it is about expressing joy and movement and honoring this inner child. Now, now for some of you as well, children or children-like concepts, children or children-like conversations may be back on the table, whether that's I want kids, I don't want kids. Um, you're taking on new level of responsibility because now you have kids or you have kids in your life. A lot of energy surfacing and sitting around children certainly is happening at that time. The other thing I think that this energy was when we get to the 16th, having the new moon in Capricorn here in this fifth house, what I think this is delicious for is starting new ventures, new projects, new businesses. If you want to start something, this is where you plant those seeds of intention and get ready to launch those actions. I really honestly feel like... Um, as we get to February, it's a little bit more of a solid base, but you plant those seeds of intention here at this new moon to start these new beginnings. And we watch over the next few weeks as the plans get set and laid for you to start whatever this new venture is. And you'll know because you've just taken the time to look at some long range goals and plans and desires. So you're prepared by now to start moving to setting them into place. You see how the month just has this beautiful flow at the beginning of the year? I'm really loving this. Okay, the other thing I just wanna point out to you is that the full moon that we had at the beginning of the month may help you see how you really want to change your plans at this new moon, and it may mean that it rocks your foundation a little bit, okay? Because sometimes in order to get to change, you got to have a breakdown if you're going to have a breakthrough. It's kind of what this is about, right? <laughs> so something may be breaking down, especially around those desires zone, so that it can actually live. Now, when we get to the 18th and the 20th of the month, we see Venus making that move on the, excuse me, on the 17th, and then we see on the 21st, the sun making a move into Aquarius. For you, this is where things are getting busy at work, okay? So not only are things getting busy, but the sun and Venus together are delicious. This is a wonderful energy. It wants to bring essence. It wants to bring harmony. It wants to bring light and life. So anything that requires you at work to work with coworkers or to be aware and gain a new skill at work or something like that, any kind of improvements on efficiency at work and also in your home life really become spotlighted right now. If this is a time where you wanted to do something with your health, um, make any kind of changes, those things are definitely spotlighted as well. Now, being a natural ruler of the sixth house, I think that you actually feel very comfortable with working with sixth house energy, but it is Aquarian tendency because it's in Aquarius. So you may have unexpected health things that come up as well. And some of you, I think that some of the unexpected health things could be pregnancy. That's very much so a thing that is spotlighted right now in my thinking and connection for the month for you. Now, when you're thinking, oh my gosh, Stormy, no, I'm not trying to do that anymore, then I'm not talking to you. That's okay. You don't have to do it. <laughs> Let's start a new business for you. Start a new fitness regime. Let's start... Um, maybe a new daily routine, right? How's your mental health? This is wonderful energy to help bring harmony to any of those things. And also, if you wanted any kind of freelance work, this energy makes you very magnetic, okay? So you don't have to go have babies if you don't want to. <laughs> On the 27th, we see Mars moving into Sagittarius. Now we have action and movement and widening and expansion to your fourth house zone. So home, family, real estate, property, these things could be expanding. You could have somebody coming into your house. Um, you could be buying more property. You could just be taking action on bringing your property or your home or your family in some way, shape, or form into um, 
an expanded form. So one example of that that I think of is, who knows, maybe you're going back home and you're visiting your family and now there's like eight people in the house, right? This has certainly gotten bigger. But this Mars action and this Mars energy helps you to make some direct moves on something in your home or family space that is useful to you. Maybe you have some repairs to do or something like that. This is a wonderful time for that. Now, as we end the month, I feel like you really get a lot of impact actually from this eclipse. And this eclipse is gonna be the lunar eclipse, so a full moon eclipse basically in Leo. Now, this is a total, so we're going to be blotting out, which is important to understand because when we blot out, we do an emotional reset. And for you, this is happening in the 12th house, and why I feel like you're so impacted is because I feel like, Virgo, over the last year, you've had a chance to see some things that don't work, some ideas that don't work, some attachments that don't work. Um, Another thing is that I think you have maybe, especially in terms of your employment or in terms of your daily routine, seen some things that don't work and maybe you've started to work on a little project behind the scene to move that forward as we get to February 15th with this solar eclipse. So I do feel like this lunar eclipse giving you a chance to reset here in the quietest sector of your being and in the quietest sector of your chart um, certainly brings a lot of healing to the table and a lot of clarity as well. So I think it's going to be a big, busy, beautiful month. There's so much joy and childlike energy just surrounding this month. Very social. I hope that you take advantage of it. I hope you get out there, express the things that you want to express. If you are single, this is certainly a time where new romance could be walking into your life. So enjoy that if that's what you've got going on. If you are coupled up, I think that this fifth house energy with all of this stuff here, romance actually gets a little bit more serious for you. You know what I mean? You realize you're like, okay, we need to go to the next level or I need to be responsible and accountable for creating this happiness, this joy, and this future plan in the relationship that I'm in. But all of that comes down to nothing but expression and beauty. So I really love this month for you, Virgo. All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursdays. I look forward to learning with you. So click in the description box, get yourself signed up, and I will see you there. And I'll also see you next month just in time for Valentine's Day. Bye, Virgo.